This is Christmas week, and it's been a pretty hectic week already. It's been a pretty hectic night already for us, and um, pretty much um, that's normal for what I do. This is a really hard month because Christmas is a really difficult time for the kind of people I serve. There's a lot of hardship, a lot of relapses, there's a lot of overdoses. Many are struggling with suicide, suicidal ideation. Um, there's a lot of, a lot of death actually. But there's a lot of problems that are, that seem to come around a similar theme um, in general that is related to a perceived sense of betrayal. So whether it is real betrayal or it is not, if when someone perceives it as betrayal, their entire system, their entire, everything becomes acclimated to as if it were real. So it has to be treated as such. And Christmas becomes a very painful time of year because then they don't know exactly how to move forward because they feel that everyone else is focused on this one event and it just seems like everyone is focused on this thing so it becomes um you it becomes a really big situation to them i'm sure most of you are aware of either being in that situation or trying to help someone through that, how polarizing that can become. The definition of betrayal involves the act of someone violating your trust in them. And betrayal is when someone you trust lies to you, cheats on you, abuses you, or hurts you by putting their own self-interest first. Betrayal is loss. It is a gross violation of trust and it can be one of the most devastating forms of pain inflicted upon a human being. The suffering of betrayal is often magnified by a sense of vulnerability and exposure, often known by others close to both parties. And for many, the pain of betrayal is worse than physical violence, deceit, or prejudice. Betrayal destroys the foundation of trust. I personally suffered significant betrayal, but I also know others have felt very betrayed by me. So I, throughout my life, have been on both sides of this spectrum. So I, I certainly have, have experienced the entire range of this. In the Bible, David was no stranger to betrayal. He says, if an enemy were insulting me, I could endure it. If a foe were raising himself against me, I could hide from him. But it is you, a man like myself, my companion, my close friend, with whom I once enjoyed sweet fellowship as we walked with a throng at the house of God. He says this in Psalm 55, 12 through 14. The closer the relationship, the greater the pain of betrayal. Jesus knew the pain of betrayal firsthand. The worst, most treacherous betrayal of all time was Judas' betrayal of Jesus for 30 pieces of silver, Matthew 26, 15. Even my own familiar friend in whom I trusted, whom ate my bread, has lifted up his heel against me. But Jesus did not become vindictive, bitter, or angry. In fact, he did just the opposite. After receiving the traitor's kiss, Jesus addressed Judas as friend in Matthew 26, 50. It needs to be said that not all betrayers commit their act intentionally. Judas and David, their friends certainly did. Judas, their friends were definitely intentional traitors. Peter did not. Sometimes friends betray us simply because they're sinful human beings, much like many of us. It's still wise to recognize that these people may not be as trustworthy as we thought they were. However, it isn't wise to paint everybody with this broad brush and call them evil and unworthy of friendship. Sometimes people are just foolish, they're hasty, and they are instantly very remorseful. They're very sorry. They didn't set out to have betrayal as being their agenda. They just betrayed. 
and they're very much wanting to make amends. So not everyone betrays in the way that Judas did and the way that David was betrayed. Despite the pain, there is a way that we can overcome betrayal and it is very much in your best interest to do so. Those of us who have felt betrayed, it is very much in your best interest to overcome it because it's probably, it's definitely not a pit that you want to stay in. It feels impossible to want to let go of it because the person who betrayed you doesn't deserve to be let out of that. But at the same time, they're not in the pit with you. So it is to your best interest to get out of that. The power comes directly from God and the strength comes from him also to forgive. After David laments a broken trust in Psalm 55, he does say, he definitely gives a hint on how to overcome the pain. He says, but I call to God and the Lord saves me. Evening, morning, and noon, I cry out in distress and he hears my voice. Psalm 55, 16 to 17. Betrayal is a robbery of safety through a breaking of trust and we must overcome the heartache it causes by giving our pain to God. There's really no other way to survive. We call the betrayal for what it is. You have to. Reconsider our personal boundaries and recognize that only God is truly trustworthy. That was one of the best things I ever learned is that you cannot put your trust in people. People are people. You cannot put your trust completely in people. You can trust God, but you cannot trust people. We tell him our pain and we allow him to handle those who have hurt us. You can trust God. The first key is to try out, cry out to God, though we may want to strike out at our, beha our betrayer. We do need to take our cause to the Lord. Do not repay evil with evil or insult with insult, but with blessing, because to this you were called so that you may inherit a blessing. So if you do start striking out at your betrayer, in the end, you have just cut off your blessing. So you're the one who ends up paying in the long run or in the short run because you've cut off your blessing from God. Another key in overcoming the pain of betrayal is to remember Jesus' example. Our sinful nature impels us to repay evil with evil as Jesus taught us otherwise. Do not resist an evil person. If someone strikes you on the right cheek, turn to him the other also. Pray for those who persecute you, Matthew 5, 39 and 44. When Jesus was abused, he did not return abuse, 1 Peter 2.23. We should conform to his example by not repaying abuse for abuse, including the abuse of betrayal. Believers are to do good even to those who harm them. And please note, this does not mean proper criminal justice in cases of abuse. Business violations should not be sought. I want to speak about such things as domestic violence. I want to speak directly about that because I do get a very good number of those calls and I want to make a very big exclusion statement about that. Most recent call that I had um, and, and having been someone who was, who was violently battered um, you do lose your way. You do lose your ability to think. And when you've been um, emotionally manipulated to the point that you can't even think for yourself, it's a really bad position to find yourself in. So I am able to think for the person. And I've also grown enough to know that it's not a time to invoke wrath or your own personal ire or I've had a long time to process through my own issues on that. But in the most recent one, when this woman was unable to think or speak clearly for herself and had just been strangled, she had just been strangled in front of one of her daughters, a small daughter, five years old, and she couldn't. Or, well, actually had to bite him to get him to stop strangling her and lost a front tooth. And she wasn't sure at that point. At that point, she felt that she was the abuser because he told her, you bit me. So she felt that she was an abuser. 
he convinced her she was an abuser. And I could see that at that point, I wasn't able to convince her that she wasn't because she was pretty sure she was. And he had convinced her that if she took the little girl and went across the state line to get safety, that he was going to have her arrested. So there was many different pieces involved here. I just said to her, I want you to look at your little girl and I want you to look at her with your husband and I want you to decide if you want your little girl to live with this man and for how much longer you want your little girl to live with this man. And immediately she gasped and she said, no, no, she can't live with him. And I said, it's okay if you want to live with him, but I want you to decide how long this little girl should live with him. And she said, no, she can't live with him. I can't have her live with him. I said, okay, well, let's make some choices for her then. You can live with him, but I want you to help me with her then. And she was out of that house within 12 hours because she couldn't make choices for herself, but she knew how terrible it would be to leave a little five-year-old in the care of that man. I want to say that to say, in cases like this, you're betraying women and little girls if you do leave them in the care of men who are going to cause them great harm. You are betraying them. So be very careful to not get this message confused when it says not to repay abuse for abuse. Don't confuse the message. I don't want anyone to ever think that I crossed this message. I want women and children and even men who are being abused there should never be anyone left in an abusive situation we should all be doing the most that we can to get people out of abusive situations we should be doing the most that we can and for those of us who don't and that we can i believe very firmly that we will answer for that i really do Another powerful key in overcoming the bitterness of betrayal is our God-given ability to forgive the betrayer. God does give us the ability. The word forgiveness includes the word give. And when we choose to forgive someone, we actually give that person a gift, the freedom from personal retaliation. But you're also giving yourself a gift, and that is that you don't live a life full of grudges. And trading our bitterness and anger for the love of God is an amazing thing to do for yourself. Jesus taught that loving our neighbor as ourselves, that definitely is the way that we're supposed to be living. But I tell you, love your enemies and pray for those who persecute you, Matthew 5, 44. Without a question, it is incredibly difficult to forgive a person who's violated our trust. It is only possible with God see Luke 18 27 but I'm telling you he does give you the ability to do it because that's how he created this to work being betrayed by a friend or a family member is one of the worst feelings possible sometimes the emotional pain is far worse than the physical pain and it's a fair question how do you handle that betrayal and this is what becomes very hard during especially Christmas seasons because it causes kind of a situation for the entire family during a gathering because it positions everyone to have to get around this situation. The first thing the person who's been betrayed wants to do is get revenge, create all kinds of different situations. If not physically, it certainly is in our thoughts but we absolutely have got to get still. We have to take our minds off the situation and we must put our minds on Jesus Christ. If we keep on thinking about the situation, we're going to keep building up anger against this person. We must give the entire situation to the Lord and then he can speak into our pain. We must allow and follow the example of Christ who was also betrayed and none of us will ever be betrayed like he was. Look at how much God forgave us, then let's forgive others because we will never have to forgive as much as he had to forgive us. We have to rest 
upon the Holy Spirit and we have to ask the Holy Spirit to help us love our enemies and to remove any bitterness and anger that's hiding in our hearts. And often when we look at enemies as having to be someone within our own close circle, our family or our close friendships, the closest people to us having hurt us, those are the ones that are, when we have to call them an enemy, that, that's where it's really painful. Understand that all the difficult things that we face in life, God will use for his great purpose. And I am living in the fruit of that. These are things that I actually, you know, can't really speak about in detail, but I, I can tell you I'm living in the fruit of that where I'm grateful that he basically isolated my life to where I couldn't speak about things, but the blessing of God that came upon me for just having to isolate myself and isolate myself, how he changed me in the process of having to just heal from pain. I went out to eat with someone last week that I hadn't seen for a couple of years and they just sat there just looking at me and I was just being my normal self. I hadn't seen them for a couple of years and was just thought it was a casual dinner. And after halfway through, they said, you're just not the same person. And I thought, well, I hope that's good. They said, it's just like amazing. You're just a totally different person than when I last saw you. I was, we talked about it some, and I, I love that God has changed me from a created person, like a created role, to a human being. I love that God has stripped me from a created person, a person who was a performer, to a human being. I had to become a human being, and I love that. I love what he forced me to become through suffering, really. It's been good for me. I say all of that to say that what is meant to cause you harm, what God will do with it, if you'll just settle down and just let him do what he's going to do, will end up being some of the best things that you'll end up having in your toolbox. Just like Joseph said, you meant evil against me, but God meant it for good. When you set your mind on Christ, there's an amazing peace and love feeling that he will provide. Find a quiet place, share your entire story with God, allow him to help you sort it all out. Pray for your betrayer, just like Jesus prayed for his enemies. The final step in overcoming the pain of betrayal is to forgive. And when we forgive, we're really giving the best gift to ourselves especially when people intentionally inflict pain on us. Our withholding of forgiveness hurts us more than it does them. To forgive someone is to give up our right to vengeance. We acknowledge their act was wrong. We might be more careful in trusting them in the future, but we do not attempt to get back at them for anything. We don't betray someone who betrayed us. Instead, like David did, we just leave it in God's hands. David concludes his psalm this way, Cast your burden on the Lord and he will sustain you. He will never permit the righteous to be moved. But you, O oh God, will cast them down into the pit of destruction. Men of blood and treachery shall not live out half their days. But I will trust in you. Psalm 55, 22 to 23. God will take care of the evildoers and he will take care of us. The saddest thing about betrayal is that it never comes from your enemies. And forgiveness doesn't excuse their behavior. Forgiveness prevents their behavior from destroying your heart. What does the Bible say about betrayal? Psalm 41, 9. Even my closest friend whom I trusted, the one who ate my bread, has lifted his heel against me. Psalm 55, 12 through 14. For it was not an enemy who insults me. I could have handled that. Nor is it someone who hates me and who now arises against me. I could have hidden myself from him, but it is you, a man whom I treated as my equal, my personal confidant, my close friend, 
We had good fellowship together. We even walked together in the house of God. Job 19.19, 19, my close friends detest me. Those I loved have turned against me. Job 19.13-14, my relatives stay far away and my friends have turned against me. My family is gone and my close friends have forgotten me. Psalm 27.10, even my father and mother abandoned me. The Lord cares for me. Exodus 14.14, 14, the Lord will fight for you and you have only to be silent. Jesus knows how it feels. He was betrayed twice. Luke twenty two fifty six to fifty six to sixty one. A servant girl saw him sitting by the fire, stared at him, and said, "This man was with him too, but he denied it." I don't know him, woman. He responded. A little later, a man looked at him and said, "You are one of them too." But Peter said, "Mister, I am not." About an hour later, another man emphatically asserted, "This man was certainly with him." because he is a Galilean. But Peter said, Mister, I don't know what you're talking about. Just then, while he was still speaking, a rooster crowed. Then the Lord turned and looked straight at Peter. And Peter remembered the word from the Lord and how he had told him, Before a rooster crows today, you will deny me three times. Matthew 26, 48 through 50. The traitor, Judas, had given them a prearranged signal. You will know which one to arrest when I greet him with a kiss. So Judas came straight to Jesus. Greetings, Rabbi, he exclaimed and gave him a kiss. Jesus said, my friend, go ahead and do what you have come for. Then the others grabbed Jesus and arrested him. 1 Peter 2.23, he did not retaliate when he was insulted, nor threaten revenge when he suffered. He left his case in the hands of God, who always judges fairly. Hebrews 12.3, for consider him who endured such hostility from sinners against himself, so that you won't grow weary and lose heart. Matthew five ten through 12 How blessed are those who are persecuted for righteousness' sake, because the kingdom from heaven belongs to them. How blessed are you whenever people insult you, persecute you, and say all sorts of evil things against you falsely because of me. Rejoice and be extremely glad, because your reward in heaven is great. That's how they persecuted the prophets who came before you. Romans 12, 14 through 19. Blessed, bless those who persecute you. Keep on blessing them and never curse them. Rejoice with those who are rejoicing. Cry with those who are crying. Live in harmony with each other. Do not be arrogant, but associate with humble people. Do not think that you are wiser than you really are. Do not pay anyone back evil for evil, but focus your thoughts on what is right in the sight of all people. If possible, so far as it depends on you, live in peace with all people. Do not take revenge, dear friends, but leave room for God's wrath. For it is written, vengeance belongs to me. I will pay them back, declares the Lord. Matthew six fourteen through 15 For if you forgive others their trespasses, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. But if you do not forgive others their trespasses, neither will your Father forgive your trespasses. Oz Hillman writes, Loving those who betray you is graduate-level Christianity. The religious community and one of his closest friends betrayed Jesus. Those who were closest to David betrayed him. Joseph's own family betrayed him. Loving our enemies cannot be accomplished by mustering it up. It can only happen when we have come to a death in ourselves so that Christ can love through us. It is truly one of those acts of identifying with the cross. If you are a leader, you can be sure God will allow you to experience betrayal. It is one of these, those courses in the kingdom that may not be required until God has seen that you have successfully passed other tests. It is the most difficult and most gut-wrenching of all tests. A godly response goes against all that is in us. Our natural response is to protect, retaliate, and retain unforgiveness and bitterness. Our natural response is Satan's most powerful weapon. To overcome, it requires much grace from God. Ask God to build his nature in you now so that when such attacks come, you will be aware 
that it is a test and you will respond in righteousness. How much repentance do you suppose there was at the cross while Jesus hung there? There was not only an utter absence of repentance, but total contempt. Jesus reply, Father, forgive them because they do not know what they are doing. Had Jesus adopted the position that he should wait until they repented, he would have shown himself to be as lost as those for whom he was dying. Furthermore, he did not shout at them, I forgive you. He prayed, Father, you forgive them. Chances are high <coughs> that those who hurt us don't even think they have done anything wrong. Nine out of ten people I have to forgive don't even, sorry, huh? no, I'm, I'm good. Nine out of ten people that I have to forgive don't even think they've done anything wrong to me. Which suggests that I too have probably hurt a lot of people without even knowing it. R.T. Kendall says, there are signs to know that you have totally forgiven and they can be summarized this way. <coughs> Sorry, it's been a long day. One, you do not tell anybody what they did to you. This would be trying to punish the one who hurt you. Two, you do not try to intimidate them. Three, you do not let them feel guilty. Four, you let them save face. Five, you accept the matter of total forgiveness as a life sentence and that you have to keep doing it indefinitely. And six, you pray that they will be blessed and let off the hook. I want to read those again. This is how you will know that you have totally forgiven. One, you do not tell anybody what they have done to you. Two, you do not try to intimidate them. Three, you do not let them feel guilty. Four, you let them save face. You accept the matter of total forgiveness as a life sentence. And you have to keep doing it indefinitely. And six, you pray that they will be blessed and let off the hook. Thank you. And as believers, we are not defined by past failures, disappointment, or the rejection of others. We are defined by our relationship with God. We are his children, born again to the newness of life, endowed with every spiritual blessing, and accepted in Christ Jesus. And we have the faith that overcomes the world, according to 1 John 5, 4. And God has prepared for each of us unique opportunities to walk through all things of this life. And we can either walk in our own strength, which the Apostle Paul calls our flesh, or we can walk in the power of the Holy Spirit. And this is a choice we get to make. God has provided us an armor, but it's up to us what if we want to wear it or not. We may suffer disappointment in this life, but we are children of the King and the rejection we experience is a momentary pain compared to eternal glory. We can allow it to keep us down or we can claim the heritage as a child of God and move forward in grace. And like Paul, we can be forgetting what is behind and straining forward to what is ahead. Forgiveness of others is important to the healing process because holding on to bitterness or nursing a grudge will absolutely poison your spirit. And we may have been wronged, the pain is real, but there is absolute freedom in forgiveness. And forgiveness is a gift that we can give because it is given to us by 
the Lord Jesus Christ. This is not something that you can work out in your own self. And what a comfort it is to know that it is God who said, never will I leave you, never will I forsake you. In Hebrews 13, 5, God is always near to comfort the believer. All of this comes from him. There is absolute, so many people think they have to come up with this. We hear this a lot. They have to work this out. This all comes from him. You choose to forgive. He produces this in you. Praise be to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of compassion and the God of all comfort, who comforts us in all of our troubles. 2 Corinthians 1, 3 through 4. God, who cannot lie, has promised to go through our trials with us. When you pass through the waters, I will be with you. And when you pass through the rivers, they will not sweep over you. When you walk through the fire, you will not be burned. The flames will not set you ablaze. Isaiah 43, 2. Cast your cares upon the Lord and he will sustain you. He will never let the righteous be shaken. Psalm 55, 22. In reality, feelings come from thoughts. So to change how we feel, we should change how we think. And this is what God wants us to do. Have the same mindset as Christ Jesus. In Philippians 4, 8, Christians are told to think on things that are true, noble, just, pure, lovely, of good report, and praiseworthy. Colossians 3, 2 says to set your mind on things above, not on earthly things. As we do this, our feelings of rejection are going to diminish. Overcoming the hurt of a broken relationship requires taking one day at a time, praying for God's guidance, and reading and meditating on God's word, and the healing can never come from our own efforts it comes from the lord and it helps to take our eyes off of ourselves and focus on god instead prior to our experience or me doing this we were doing prayer ministry with a young lady here who's just being tormented in her sleep and just can't sleep she's scared to even go home because she just faces this torment in her apartment and and so we can do prayer ministry and deal with some of these things but we told her to play um you know we're uh, we talk about this often but these um they're called wonder bibles we order them from amazon and um you can download um apps on free apps on your phone called bible.is or the U version. there's several of them now that are free where you can play an audio bible all night in your in your home um tatiana also prays on our seven bells refuge youtube channel now in the spirit all night and and pretty much makes it impossible for the demonic to to cause trouble in the evening i mean it makes most of us sleep so much better but so we are very aggressively trying to create ways for people to be able to sleep at night in addition to prayer ministry. So um, for people who are struggling, especially this season, we know people are really struggling, but I would strongly suggest that you, if you don't have a Wonder Bible, get one. Play it in your home all day. Keep the Bible playing in your home, but also... Um, keep the Bible app playing. I would always, if you're really, really struggling, keep an earbud in your ear all the time with the Word of God playing because it will keep the enemy from being able to really root in your thoughts. And then um, Tatiana, praying in the Spirit, you won't understand what she's saying, but the demonic sure is put off by what she's saying. And it will certainly make it easier for you to sleep at night if you have the Spirit praying, the Holy Spirit is praying through her into your space. So there's, um, there's multiple things we're doing on, our, on her channel. Um, she also has healing scripture and at midnight, oh yeah, onto our seven bells page. Yeah, she'll start actually in 40 minutes. It will start on our on this page yeah. yeah on our seven bells page it will start actually so that you could 
we're just really being aggressive at helping people get peace and healing and freedom on that's what the whole purpose of seven bells is is for people to become healed so I just wanted to insert that a broken relationship is very painful but the Lord is gracious and he has provided for your healing and he can give your lives meaning purpose and joy and I promise you that I have gotten so much wreckage and damage in my history you don't even you wouldn't even believe it you wouldn't even believe it and and I know for the two that share in this in this home this ministry home we we talk about it the amount of wreckage in our lives is is stunning it's amazing and we're always willing to share about that that what God has done with it we are not people who sit here and say that we made right choices therefore we are being used in ministry it is exactly the opposite is that we handed him nothing but brokenness and we marvel that we were chosen by the most high and we are a story of healing what God can do with absolute brokenness so um, John 6 37 whoever comes to me I will never drive away that is whoever whoever means whoever so whoever comes to me I will never drive away and I would also say that we welcome you to contact us if you want prayer or well that's what we are we are here to pray with you our Lord's relationship with his children is one that will never be broken I I want to strongly say do not let bitterness win because if you do I want I want to say this if you do bitterness shows up on your face for anybody this is something everyone knows you can go to Walmart you can go to cup foods you can go to any grocery store and you can stand in the checkout line and you can look at people all around you can just look around the store and you can see bitterness on people's faces you don't have to be a religious person you can just look around and you can see who's bitter because it shows up on people's faces bitterness plants itself in your features and then it talks out your mouth because it it shows up it is it is such a big thing it takes over it takes over and so when bitterness gets in and you let it take over it takes over your appearance and you start to talk and look bitter and people don't want to be around you they say that's a really bitter person I don't want to be around her and the only people that want to be around you are the other bitter people because they talk all of you talk bitter you run people down you you gossip and tear other people up you just spend your time judging and condemning and tearing up other people this is what the characteristics of a bitter person are this is a person who has chosen not to forgive which the Bible says is a person who is not going to heaven a person who is unwilling to forgive who has chosen to become a bitter person is a person who will be denied entrance into heaven these are the qual this is what this looks like they're full of self-pity they're ungrateful they're selfish they're insincere they find it hard to forgive they sow discord full of pride envious and covetous meaning they, they well envious and covetous they they feel joy out of someone's misfortune. They're very critical. They're fault finders. They're plotters. They plot. They're vindictive. They desire to see others suffer. They look for a reason to get back at people. They're always looking for a fight. They're drowning in animosity and resentment. They see only themselves. They hide and camouflage themselves they attract like-minded people like themselves they're full of malice wrath and anger clamor rage slander and evil speaking if any of that feels like you i would be racing to get 
delivered of that because that is a person who is not looking like they're heading towards heaven. I would not keep going that way if I were you. Healing from emotional wounds doesn't happen all at once. It does take a long time. Paul writes in Philippians 1, 6, I am sure of this, that he who started a good work in you will carry it on to completion until the day of Christ Jesus. Healing does take a while. But choose to forgive immediately. Don't walk around with unforgiveness. God is always working, but we have to realize that there may be tension this side of eternity. Romans 12, 18 reminds us to live at peace with everyone that we are able to, we are responsible to do our part. That doesn't mean others will do theirs. We can pursue reconciliation, but that doesn't guarantee that it will occur since there's other people who aren't going to be respectful. You can't make someone like you, love you, forgive you, or reconnect with you, but you can walk in the light. You are responsible for your own heart. So if someone doesn't want to reconcile, and they want to stay bitter, there's not a lot that you can do about that. This season is full of relationships, some difficult, some delightful. Some relationships will rekindle your love for people and others are going to drain you. Please be good to yourself in the process. Don't, don't give too much energy to the ones that are going to drain you. Even so, remind ourselves that even when people disappoint, we serve a God who left the glory of heaven to be with us. Something happened earlier tonight and Shaylee came in the door. What did she say? She we said, she said, we are a stiff necked people. She just stood there and said it like three times. We are a stiff necked people that God would want to be with us. She said that God would want to be with us. We are such a stiff necked people. She just stood there just shocked. Why would God want to be with us? It was such like this revelation. Jesus served in the opposite way that he was treated. He knew exactly what humankind was capable of, but in coming to earth, he took the lowest seat. He stepped into our shoes. He experienced a broken life on earth. And as he hung on the cross, he let go of all bitterness by saying, Father, forgive them because they do not know what they are doing. Luke 23, 34. Jesus will walk with us while we celebrate him this season, no matter who we encounter. Don't let bitterness get inside your spirit. Don't let the unforgiveness of betrayal get inside your spirit. Keep your eyes on him. Be extra kind this Christmas. There's a lot of people hanging by a thread. There's a good chance things won't be the same next Christmas either. Things are just crazy out there. Remember, life will betray you, but God will never betray you. So please reach out to us if we can serve you in any way. We hope you all have a Merry Christmas. Precious Lord, I pray that by the power of your Holy Spirit, you would go out across everyone who is hearing this and you would just flood them with an overwhelming peace and an healing presence. I pray always for revival, God, that you would do something so amazing that light a fire God out there that just starts we want to see Jesus we want to see Jesus whatever it takes God for revival to start please do it please make it happen make the news stop talking about everything else but that everybody is talking about Jesus, that suddenly people are being healed, that this virus is no longer the big thing, that people are being healed. 
that people aren't dying anymore. People are being healed. Come, Lord Jesus, we ask you to show up here. Do something so crazy on this earth that everyone is left speechless in wonder. This Christmas season, I pray that you come for yourself and be present here. Shock everybody and show up for your own celebration. We love you, Jesus. You are the reason that we live. Forgive us, God, for everything that we have done that would bring any kind of shame to your name and help us, God, to continue to exalt you and bring glory to the name of Jesus Christ. We love you. We ask this all in your precious name, Jesus. Amen.